Child Support Secrets Foundations 2. Let's get into it. I'm just going to read the document. I took time to write out all of my thoughts in the process, and I'm trying to give you the bird's eye view so that you can have the big picture. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of what it is that you need to do and what the process is and all of that. Okay. Two ways to respond to presentments. So what are presentments? Here are examples. Any inquiry via legal notice, a court hearing notice, any bill statement, anything that someone is requesting from you through the mail, right? Okay. So what we have available in, to respond to these uh, presentments is we have the judicial process, which is managed via the courthouse, or we have the administrative process, which we manage via mail. Both of these processes are private. Okay. I'll come I'll circle back around to what I mean by both of them are private because I know you're thinking, well, the court is public. I'll explain in a minute. Okay, so let's continue on. The administrative process is the path for this course. It is a private remedy that retains your rights to redress and settle any grievances pursuant to the Ninth Amendment, Article 1, which is similar to Article 1. Oh, let me fix this to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18 of the Constitution because it helps to acknowledge the rights not specifically mentioned, but still protected by the U.S. Constitution, okay? So, for example, the right to privacy. Although it was not mentioned specifically in the Constitution, all Americans are allowed to keep their secrets and have private information that they are not willing to share with others without the Ninth Amendment stating that, even though specific personal rights of the people are not listed in the Constitution, it does not mean that people don't have these other rights. Most of the other rights are just as important as the ones listed. So there you have that. So let's move it along. So we have the different ways, again, to respond to a presentment. So under honor, we have acceptance of performance, which is equal to you saying agency claims you owe, so you pay, end of story, right? You just agree, whatever, you know you owe it, you, you're willing to pay it, no argument there. They say you owe, you pay, it's over. Then you have the conditional acceptance, which is equivalent to you saying you agree to pay upon proof of claim. Because otherwise, anyone can make any random claim against you. They can they can say that you're a man on the moon. Well, people can't just walk up to you and say stuff to you, so you make them prove it, right? So that's what a conditional acceptance is. Refusal for cause means that there's no evidence of liability due to error. So mistaken identity, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to get into any of that. We are going to focus on one particular path, okay? So let me just go over real quick the dishonor. Dishonor is refusal by argument. This is you asking for uh, their authority, their this, their that, et cetera. Again, we're not dealing with anything under dishonor. The next one is default by acquiescence by not responding to the presentment. So you, you know, you want to just be an ostrich and put your, put your, you know, head in the sand? No. We're not going to do anything concerning dishonor. The only path for this course is the conditional acceptance pursuant to Article 78. So what is Article 78? Article 78 is the article of the Civil Practice Law and Rules, CPLR, which establishes the procedure for challenging any determinations of an administrative agencies, public bodies, or officers. This is your right. These include every court, tribunal, board, corporation, officer, or other person, or any aggravation of persons. This makes the process extremely effective because it changes the terms of the contract that is in your favor. Okay, so here's a reference that you can look up Administrative Procedure Act for additional background information for those of you who are like me, very studious, and just like to do legal research and my own due 
you know, diligence when it comes to information. So when you do a conditional acceptance, this removes the controversy from the matter and it makes it an administrative process, not judicial. The court can see the matter is complete, exhausted, and unrebutted. And then they must act administratively and in a ministerial capacity only where there is no, um, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. They must act administratively and in a ministerial capacity only where there is no immunity for any trespass on your document. So if the judge wants to make any judicial determination, that is that is considered a trespass on your documents. No, they're not supposed to be making any kind of ruling or asking for any more further evidence or any anything concerning the documents. The only thing that they need to do is it's is rule that your your process is complete and give you the summary judgment. That's it. Okay, so the conditional acceptance, here's where I am. The conditional acceptance includes a surety bond as your performance if they prove their claim and it is the remedy to remove you as the surety for the debt that they claim you owe and to accept for their claim for value. Together, this process is a conditional acceptance for value, or CAV, to remove the debt through a bill of exchange dollar for dollar. The surety bond is the appropriate performance acceptable to governmental agencies because they operate with commercial paper and admiralty as a, a transaction because it is a debt claim on your all caps name or otherwise known as the straw man. OK, the amount of one hundred thousand dollars is trouble awards for the claim. For them going through the trouble of having to make this claim against you, I made it. I've made the determination that one hundred thousand is the appropriate amount to cover all the entire debt. If they keep the surety bond or return it, it is accepted and the claim is discharged pursuant to HJR 192, which states that no requirement to pay debt with substance, which is debt. Okay, so here's the process. You have three steps for sure, and the two optional steps, right? So step one, you're gonna send the first round of notices, which is the CAV, which includes the, the cover letter, the surety bond, and the affidavit. You always wanna have some type of cover letter, right? Because the cover letter gives instructions, you know, it gives advice. And then, of course, we just went over the surety bond and then the affidavit, right? The affidavit of fact, the affidavit of truth. So you send that out. It's just three documents. You send that out and then you give it the time allotted. OK, we go over that in the other section of the of the um, of the course. So you go into step two, which is, the you know, your second notice. So you send them the same CAV package. You just you know, write it on the top, second notice, written right on top. Don't complicate this, okay? And step three is your third notice, right? One, two, three, you're out. Like baseball, it's really just that simple. You can write final attempt at the top of your CAV package, and then you also include another notice, which is called the notice of default with opportunity to cure, right? Okay, so that is an additional notice this is the this is the first time you, that you're adding a second letter on top of your cav package right from your first round from your from the first step right okay Whew, i'm sorry i'm just not feeling well but i'm trying to get this stuff done all right so <clears throat> step four is optional right it is an affidavit of non-response or certificate of dishonor this is done if you are doing it through a notary public, most notary publics don't want to do it. They don't want to get involved. They don't understand the process. They don't want to do it. Right. So it's up to you. If you have a notary involved, then go ahead and, 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 and proceed with step four. If not, no, nothing is lost. You're fine. You don't have to have it. 
Okay, this is just being extra thorough if that's who you are, if that's your personality, but it's not an absolute necessity by law. It is not. Okay, step five, also optional. Some people want to include a notice of, of nihil uh, decent. I cannot say that word. It's Latin, it's not English, it's Latin. And for he says nothing, a defendant's failure to answer the lawsuit. But it's a bit of an overkill. So again, it's not necessary. If you stick to step one, step two, step three, you're good. But if you, you know, you're extremely thorough, go ahead. I, I can't tell you what, what feels right for you or what feels comfortable for you. So I'm just laying it all out for you so you can see what's available to you. All right, let's continue on. To err is human. By law, you are allowed to correct any prior mistakes. So if you made a, pro, uh, a, a mistake with any of your administrative process, you can fix it. You can correct it. There is no nothing lost. It is just a matter of, you know, yeah, you'll have to spend a little bit more time, but, you know, it's worth it to you know, make the correction so that when you get to the, the final step, which we're about to go over, you know, you want to be, uh, you want to know that you completed the process to the best of your ability. Otherwise, you will have to start over from step one. And even then, if you have to start over from step one, there is still no love loss because it's better to get it right, you know, the first time, second time, third time than to, you know, submit something that is in error. Okay. So let's just, ah, enough. I've said enough about that. Okay. So again, by law, you are allowed to correct any prior mistakes, simply conduct an audit of what you've done, then make the correction. And then you go from there. Don't overcomplicate cop. Lord have mercy. Don't overcomplicate this, this process. Okay. I talked about that in the other video, right? In the foundations one video, don't muddle the waters. It's, it's, it's all right here. Everything you have more advantage than the people that came before you, because I didn't even provide a video for them. I just told them, da, 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 you know, and I just, we went through the process super, super, you know, fast and they were done. So you have a little bit more than they do. So, you know, don't complicate it. All right, let's keep on reading here. After the recipients fail to respond, which is what you really want. People are like panicking. Well, I'm not hearing from them. Well, that's what you want. <laughs> you want to default them. You want them to go into default. So after the recipients fail to respond, send your administrative process, all of your documents from your administrative process to the court for a summary judgment, which is court on paper. The court must act in a non-judicial ministerial capacity because all matters are presented as conclusive facts that the recipients acquiesced are in acquiescence by silence pursuant to the Seventh Amendment, all right? The judge must agree that you completed the due process and the recipient failed to respond. Therefore, you don't owe the debt claim. Send a copy of the summary judgment to the recipients with instructions to close your account and your case is closed. So now let's talk about the recovering of, of damages for recovering for damages. The recipient is in dishonor, right? So now they're in dishonor and must cease and desist from the debt claim against you as the surety for the all caps name slash straw man. If they continue to pursue the debt claim, i.e. ignore everything you've done up to this point, they are committing a harm against you. You are now in a position to sue them for injury according to the fee schedule. The fee schedule is in the course. Okay, just go through it with a fine tooth nail, you'll find it. The recipient's dishonor of the contract also means that you can place a lien against them. Liens are incredibly valuable because they can be sold to debt collectors to enforce the payment for a fee. Meaning the debt collector, you'll, you'll be hiring a debt collector or you can sell 
the lien to a debt collector. Either way, you negotiate that. That's not a part of this course. You can pursue that. Call debt collecting companies. They will more than more than be, you know, oh, what am I trying to say? They'll be more than happy to buy the debt. This country is ran on debt everywhere. It's run, you know, the countries around the world, they're run on debt and debt is valuable. So you can sell your debt, which is this lien against the recipient. So place the, the UCC lien by filing it in the state where the recipient is located. This lien against the recipient must be satisfi satisfied before the recipient takes any further action against you. Okay, so that's what you're doing. You're going to the U UCC of that state, wherever the, your um, your recipient is located. So let's say you know your child support case is in Texas. So you're gonna go to the state of Texas. And you're going to find the UCC filing for the state of Texas. And you're going to file a UCC lien against, you know, the child support enforcement agency, the one that's making the debt claim against you. That's who you're going to file against because you're going to use your um, your summary judgment along with the UCC filing form. And you're going to file that that lien against them in the state that the case is located, not your state. If it happens to be the same state that you're located, fine. But it is important to note that it's it needs to be in the state where the, uh, the child support agency is located, okay? That's where they're doing business. That's where you want the lien, the, the lien, the lien to be registered and recorded, okay? So, Where I lost my place. Damn it. Delete. Okay. Okay. So boom. So remember when I mentioned both process uh, processes are private to add another layer of accountability to the recipient of your private administrative process, you can file the UCC lien at the county recorder. Okay. Because that's a that's a public notice. Whenever you file anything on the at the county record, that makes it public and known. Okay, but if your um if your local county recorder resists or gives you any problem, I would just leave that fight alone and just file it online with the county recorder for Toombs County, Georgia. Websites change, so I don't even want to give you the website that I have because websites change and links change. So please search for it on Google, Toombs County, Georgia, get a phone number and call them and say, listen, I want, I would like to file uh, you know, a, a, a deed on the county recorders, use the word deed, right? When you're talking to them on the phone and then you go ahead and go through the process based on their instruction, the instructions change, websites change, links change. So I don't want this video to become obsolete, you know, in a month or a year. So I'm not going to put that in there because inevitably it'll, it'll change. So that's the county that I use because here in Maryland, where I am, located right now. Uh, sometimes they file it and sometimes they don't. They just don't like all of these private processes because they want to, you know, make their decisions, which they're not supposed to. So instead of fighting that fight, I have bigger fish to fry. So I just keep it moving and I just file it at uh, Toombs County, Georgia. Okay. So that is it. I hope that this brought clarity. Just watch this video over and over. And I'm also going to add this document to the, on the same page. Okay. So you'll be able to download it, review it, go over it. Okay. But it's, it's a very simple process. Very, very simple. We're just going through the motions of proving that they don't have a claim against you. And then you get a summary judgment and then you can sue them. It's open 
season on them because they're they're committing you know a harm against you they're injuring you you know they're damaging your good name all that good stuff so all of the um again all of the damages is listed on your fee schedule and if uh if memory serves me correctly the fee schedule has uh bolded you know font for all the things that uh, is applicable to the child support um agency the type of harm that they're doing to you okay so just go to the fee schedule and you'll see how much damages you can recover it's really well in i think it's over two hundred thousand dollars but you'll have to pursue it in a a lawsuit against them and you will prevail because you know you're showing that you went through you gave them every possible chance to stop this and they they you know they just tried to run all over you and disrespect you and violate you so okay they have to pay so that's pretty much that um i don't want to ramble on i just i hate to ramble on but that's pretty much it i'll see you guys in the uh, discussion forum.